Okay, next speaker uh, now is uh, Michael Sieber. Uh, Michael Sieber is the head of information superiority of the European Defense Agency. Uh, European Defense Agency manages uh, and coordinates many projects uh, of uh, European uh, ministers of defense uh, to increase uh, capability at the European level for uh, in the area of information assurance. And uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, welcome to Michael. Thank you. This is on and this is back. Onwards, backwards. Cool. Looks complicated. Yeah, it is. Well, so probably not. <laughs> thanks for the introduction. Thanks for invitation. Thanks for the privilege for a humble defense agency to be the first in the row to speak. Just set my timer so I won't take too much time. In fact, we are a humble agency of uh, roughly 120 staff, enthusiastic about helping the member states and the European Council to develop the capabilities that are necessary in the context of our common security and defense policy. We have a very distinguished head of agency, Ms. Federica Morgherini, the High Representative for Foreign Affairs, and we have a full brief diplomat, uh, Jorge Tomek, as our chief executive. We deliver a la carte, as we say, slow cooking, high-level, long-term policies, food, uh, but also down to fast food software applications that go immediately into our operations. Today I'm here with three hats, basically, in that respect. Uh, one is as a policymaker, despite the remarks that Rufa made. Um, the second one a little bit as an expert, but the third one clearly also as a European citizen. And uh, this also to highlight that my keynote, which I consider as uh, setting the scene because it's also partly contains uh, very personal views. It's a fact that we, these days, we cannot escape the ubiquity of cyberspace. So we are cyber. Um, it affects all our living, our basic needs, our fundamental rights. This is why we need, from a top-down perspective, share responsibility about among government and administration, clearly, also among industry and among academia and ed education. And where this is reflected, I'm, I'm, as a European, I'm very proud of this cybersecurity strategy, is the European cybersecurity strategy that was released in 2013. It's very comprehensive. It uh, considers a lot of aspects that are important. So I think this is a very good framework, a guiding document uh, for for these aspects. Now reality check, especially at the higher levels of decision makers, be it in administration, government, but also be it in industry. Doesn't look very uh, encouraging or promising at the moment. Um, we have mainly three characteristics, which is fragmentation, which is compartmentalization, and which is a certain distorted perception of what it is, probably coming out of uncertainty and not non-knowledge. Um, and all of these prevent what is most important in this area, it's collaboration, cooperation. So among European member states, it's hilarious. They claim digital sovereignty, but they rely mostly on Chinese hardware, on US American software, and they need a famous Russian uh, to reveal, unveil the vulnerability. So, very interesting situation. Now, what about defense in this context? First thing is we naturally have operated in the past and are still operating dangerous assets, weapon systems, which increasingly rely on information and communication technologies, of course, on zeros and ones, and therefore are by nature also vulnerable to cyber threats. But there are also developments in the future that start emerging, which is we will, or we are seeing a military internet of things coming. But also going away from the government towards industry, we see an in defense industry 4.0 coming. So with all knowledge, protection, and this kind of thing. And a third development, we are going towards autonomous systems mentioned already by Rufo, so 
UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, or remotely piloted aerial vehicles, as they're called in the European context, ground vehicles, etc. So an, an increasing autonomy of these systems. So it's clear that we have a high benchmark on the military side, both on performance and security safety. Security safety, it's not that everything is bad already now, but currently it means 100% safe means 0% operational. So you stay home, you're not connected to anything, but this is not what helps you fulfill your mission. Reality check here, we've been in a constant catch up situation for the past decades. Um, in the military, question is, is it the same in the civil world? So whenever we discovered either in performance or safety security, we have a deficiency, we try to cure it, we try to patch it. And we're still in this situation. So question is, if we extrapolate to the next 10 years and consider the developments that we see in terms of innovation, can we continue this way? Or should we, and this is what we clearly have in the military, at least in EDA context, have a vision about what the future looks like. And we summarized it on the future systems, uh, smart mission configurable services in a secure cloud. So from an information superiority point of view, cloud is a conditio sine qua no, um, but it has to uh, follow these attributes. So question is, looking at the decades behind, looking into the near future, do we need a new approach? And I just give two examples of cornerstones in, in these, or a couple of examples, cornerstones in this approach. One, I mentioned already, or it's in the name, much more service orientation. Second, in the defense, having not very much uh, budget available, we need to spend wiser. So while in the past we put a lot of money into questionable value for money, uh, we should change something from the outset. And this has to do, as we see it now, very much with architectures. And when I say architectures, it also um, immediately touches the area of, of standards, of certification then, of course. So that's inherent. But I'll try to share more views than during the panels, so not to waste too much time here. But what we also see, especially in defense industry, if you look at that platform, so first we see the metal. So we're, we're building something out of metal. And then we realize, oh, it has to communicate. So we attach a communication or an information element to it. And now we realize it has to be safe and secure. So we put a cyber element on top of it. So this is certainly not the way you want to continue design in the future. Design has to happen from the information angle of view. So it's, uh, as we today we say, uh, sometimes I was, oh, my, my smartphone, by the way, I forgot to mention, I can also make a phone call with it, a part of many other things. So if such a smart device is to, to go somewhere, to some place, to transport something, or to shoot, if necessary or to fly, then this is the way to, to design it in the future and not try to, to teach a tank how to talk or how to think. Much more fluent way. Another key item, I slightly object that everything is resolved, maybe knowledge-wise uh, in, in crypto, but I think on the commercial side, on the availability, especially of innova innovative products, or with products sufficiently supporting the innovation path that we see in other areas, like autonomous vehicles, et cetera, or miniaturization, military internet of things. I think we're not there. But we consider it a key element, which the name basically says, uh, crypto. That's why I put the QED. Um, and there, therefore, we currently concentrate very much on this, not alone, but together with uh, the other framework. But I'll come to that. Now, on the conversation, we have a phenomenon here in, in Europe. And uh, this is, uh, we have a lot of smart people in the universities. Um, we have a lot of potential, a lot of knowledge, especially, for example, in the crypto domain. But either these young people already are hired by the big ones, because they, their working environment is much more attractive than the one we can offer in Europe. Or whenever a startup becomes 
successful, it's being bought. So it's uh, basically the, the law of gravitational attraction, which means in consequence that in Europe we have to do something about crit building critical mass in the industrial landscape. Trying to summarize this in a picture is uh, what we have in Europe and, and um, maybe for the objective. From a military point of view, it's smart mission configurable services in a secure cloud. But uh, from what Rufo said in the introduction, it is to have a platform other than Apple or Google, a platform that follows the rules that we could attach to this platform. Um, that would be the vision, a better web, a better cloud, you may call it. And we're not all that bad in our setup. We have a framework, very good framework, with the cybersecurity strategy, with the digital agenda, cyber defense policy framework, especially for the military. Yes. And we have a lot of instruments at the bottom. So currently, we have we try to bridge the investment gap that we have in Europe with the Juncker plan. We have structural funds, we have, we have SME programs, we have uh, the next multi-annual financial framework coming ahead, so it's gonna be planned in 2018. Maybe we have some ideas for that. From defense point of view, we have a preparatory, so-called preparatory action, which will allow for defense-related uh, research in the next framework program. So, there are a lot of instruments, but what we also see that they are hardly synchronized in any way. So the one go, may go into this direction, the other one in that direction. We have very good example where we lose competitiveness, although we have a high potential, because these instruments and the stakeholders are not synchronized enough towards a joint vision. I try to put it into a very simple formula, so I think if we look at outer space, now don't look at the current model as it is operated, but to take the, let's say, intellectual effort to, to build a navigation 2.0, I think we will be able in Europe to do the same in the ICT world, in the cyber world. And it's just a matter of taking a lot of money, of course, but we do have a lot of money available for investments. Concentrate on what we are good in. I come back to architectures. I come back to standards. I come back to disruptive elements like crypto. But then combine smart clustering, so that's more the industrial landscape, SMEs. I think we need the big ones or some big ones. It's again this gravity issue. And also smart regulation. Now, what is smart regulation? You could argue whenever you don't know how to regulate it, you call it smart regulation. But I'm convinced there is some regulation necessary. Just recent case of Audi uh, shows that uh, you cannot leave everything to industry free play, or you should not, uh, depending on what kind of objectives you have. The climate has been favorable, so I'm, I'm trying to market this been trying to market this for some time now. It started after Snowden, but right now the more explosive come back into the terrorist scene. I think we are, we are, the pendulum is already moving back, so we really need to hurry to get our act together. And this concludes my introduction. Thank you very much.